Pipe with Coach. And today, one of the things we're going to talk about is some mistakes that we've made in fitness, and these are some things that we've done as, as coaches, as an industry, um, in kind of as fitness businesses a little bit. So we're just going to kind of talk about some of these things, and maybe if you're making any of these mistakes, um, it's some things that maybe you can change up um, and to, to help your routine and get, get better workouts. So our beer today, um, actually one of our coaches brought it in for us today, uh, Patty, and it's a Vienna Lager from Devil's Backbone there in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, so it's just a nice kind of light, refreshing summer beer. It's only about 5.2%, so it's one of these beers you can kind of sit outside by the pool in the backyard, have a few of them, and you know, not be really like hammered or anything like that. You know? So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good beer. So. First thing we're going to talk about, um, the, one of the more recent mistakes that our industry has made is we've gotten too functional with a lot of our, our exercise and our fitness. And we're starting to move away from that now and we're getting back to actually training, actually getting people strong. Um, yes, we're getting them to move better, but for a while there we were focusing a lot on corrective stuff, we were focusing on just doing small body weight movements. And a lot of people need that stuff, but the problem is, is that's not what they're coming in and they don't want to pay for that. So we see with a lot of clients, they may need three months of corrective work, they may need just core training, they may need just you know, base level movements, but clients aren't going to pay for that. And so we need to, to give them what they want, but also keep them safe. So with this, we need to get the best movement that we can get for the day and then keep building off of that each day. Um, or each workout, and over time they're going to get they're going to get better movement with that. But if we try to just spend a whole hour doing corrective stuff, uh, base level core and, and movements, they're going to leave. They're not going to stay around, and that's not going to help them long term get into better shape. Um, so, so we need to um, to train them, but train them safely. The other thing with the functional training that you know we've probably pretty much have moved away from this. But we started getting where we started doing everything like on a BOSU ball or on a balance disc or something like that. And that's really actually more dysfunctional than it is functional. And one of the things that we're seeing now with a lot of people, they're coming in, they're already unstable and they have balance issues. So when we put them on one of these implements and we challenge their, their balance and their stability more, we're just stacking instability on top of instability. And that's really just a recipe for, for an injury. And, and again, that's gonna keep them out of the gym. That's not gonna help them with their long-term goals. It's not gonna help them to, to live more active and fit lives. So again, we, we wanna focus on functional training, but functional training really means doing things like deadlifts, doing things like squats, pushing, pulling, carrying things, um, crawling in the sense of like bear crawls, and then just some basic level, um, some core stuff and things like that. Second uh, mistake that we've made is, as we got into functional training, we kind of forgot about isolation work and some of the bodybuilder stuff. And we, you know, we all kind of snickered about oh, the bodybuilder that can't, you know, reach behind his back and can't wipe his butt and all that kind of stuff because he's just so, you know, bound up. But there, there is some benefit to some of this stuff. You know, we don't need to spend our whole workout, um, you know, just doing bicep curls and you know, pec flies and shoulder work and stuff like that but I think there is a place for this and one of the things is is your clients want to do some of that stuff they want to do some bicep curls they want to do some tricep extensions maybe do some shoulder raises and shrugs and stuff because these isolation exercises are they are going to give us they're going to give us nice arms they're going to give us uh, nice shoulders and definition there but again they shouldn't take up the majority of your program we need to to be strong we need to be able to press and to pull and have the big movements down um, probably before we get into some of the isolation stuff and if we have that stuff down it's only going to make the isolation things better. Um, the other thing that we're starting to see a little bit too by adding some of these um, isolation things back in um, we're seeing healthier shoulders we're seeing um, you know better better joints at, at the elbows and things like that because um, all this stuff strengthens around there and it, it is a little bit smaller muscles but um, we're seeing that we just create better joint integrity um, when we added 
little bit of this stuff in a few times each week. So again, don't be afraid to add, um, you know, a couple sets of curls in each week, a couple sets of tricep extensions, you know, side raises, shrugs, and any of that kind of stuff that you like to do. And like I said, our clients like doing it. It, it makes them feel good. They kind of, you know, especially the guys, they can see that pump immediately, and you know that that makes them feel good about their workouts. And it wants to keep it keeps them wanting to come back. Number three is for a while, and we did this. We um, just stopped bench pressing, and I'm not sure that that was necessarily the, the best thing either. Um, I do feel that we need to get better at push-ups. We shouldn't just bench press, um, especially with your your male clients that have probably spent most of their life benching. You know, the the, the last thing they need is probably more bench pressing, but there is a place for your program. It helps you build some some raw strength with that. Um, again, it kind of falls into that isolation stuff. Like I don't think it should make up the majority of your programming. But if you you know want to do it once a week or once every two weeks or something like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, if a per like we have clients that have some shoulder injuries, maybe we don't do it, or maybe we stop at 90 degrees with it and, and see how that works. Um, but if they have a shoulder issue that you know is problematic with one of those modifications, then we just don't do it. We focus on other things with that. But again. It's gotten a little bit of a, a bad rap in the sense of um, you know people just totally moved away from it. It's a bad exercise, and there really isn't a bad exercise. It's just a, you know some exercises are appropriate for certain people and are not appropriate for other people, um, and, and I think that's one of those that falls in there. So if it's something that you like doing and you do it a few times a week, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you're doing some push-ups. Make sure you're getting your rows in there, and you know long term everything's going to stay healthy. Fourth thing is we have also gotten um, to this point where we're trying to achieve perfect form on everything. And there really is no perfect form. There is some, are some guidelines of how we want people moving, but every person is going to move differently. You know, if we're looking at squat and deadlifts, it's going to depend on femur length and lower leg length and torso length. Um, so the, everybody's going to have a slightly different squat, a slightly different deadlift. And what might be right for one person may not be right for another person. The other thing that we run into here a little bit is some people, they, they can't get perfect form. So what we have to do is we have to break that movement down a little bit. Again, we don't want to, like I was talking about earlier, just focus on correctos because they want to train. They, and that's what's going to keep them back, coming back. We need to keep them safe. We need to find a modification and we need to find what is going to be good enough today that is still keeping them safe so they're not getting hurt, but also will help them over time learn how to, to do that movement. Because for a lot of people, they, this stuff is new, they haven't done these movements before and their body's just kind of trying to figure out what, it's, what you're asking them to do or what you're asking your body to do. And the only way to learn that is through practice and through going uh, going through it, just some repetition. The fifth thing is this idea of no pain, no gain. This is probably one of the stupidest sayings ever. They've made t-shirts with it. Some of you watching this may own the shirt that has that thing on there. But it's right up there with, you know, fill the burn and it's all you, bro. These are like probably just ridiculous sayings. And if, if you have pain with something, that's a sign that you probably need to stop, you need some type of, of modification with it. Um, you know, sometimes there there may be some pain and some discomfort that you know maybe needs work through a little bit. But if you're getting sharp pains on something, that's a that's a sign that something needs changed. If you find that something is progressively getting worse and worse over time, again that's a, and, and not getting better. That's a sign that we're doing some damage there and something needs needs changed with that or, or we're gonna get an injury. And if we get an injury, we're not gonna be able to train. If we can't train, we're not going to be able to, to get the, get any gains or improvements. Um, but we see this a lot right now. They just wanna go hard and balls to the wall and just, you know, they, they need to kill themselves in, in the gym to burn, you know, so many calories or, or do whatever. And rarely that, that ever works. Um, you know, this isn't to say to just kind of sit back and be like, oh, I'm just gonna you know, slack off and go through the motions. But, you know, we still wanna push hard, but we've gotta be sensible about this. If our body's telling us, hey, this, this isn't right, I, I need, I need to, to change something, 
we have to listen to it and, and make those adjustments because that is going to keep us healthy. It's going to keep us in, in the gym. It's going to keep us working out. And when we can do this consistently, that's how we stay healthy. It's how we stay fit. And really, fitness is, is about the long game. It's not about some short-term goal of like, I'm going to, you know, kick my butt right now for the next, you know, three, four weeks because I'm going on vacation and then I'm not going to do anything for the next, you know, month or two months. That, that, that doesn't work. Um, you know, that, that's how you get hurt. Um, so again, it's just it's a it's a long term goal with fitness, and it's just it's it's a lifestyle. It's something you do a couple of days every week, and you just keep doing that for, for the rest of your life, and you'll stay healthy and you'll stay fit. Another mistake that we've we've seen, and we've made this as business owners, um, as, as a whole industry, is we push this unrealistic image of what perfection is, and it's it's real simple. What's the, what's the format for most fitness ads? It's booty shorts. Uh, sports bra, cleavage, and abs, and and young. So we put this this person that's probably one to two percent of the population in our ad, and you know, with some stupid slogan, um, basically saying that if you don't look like this, you're not good enough. And and that that's it. That's sends a really bad message to you know. 98, 99% of the population that, that doesn't look like that or have that, that body type. The, the person in that ad looks like that because of genetics. So we, you know, one of the things that we try to do is we want to, to promote and push you to know, be the best that you can be, have the best body that you can have at this point in your life. Um, you know, we, one of my mentors told me that you know we, we all had this day where we were the best. We were the, the best looking, the fittest, and, and everything like that. And that day was probably sometime in your 20s. And once once you're past that, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna get that back. You know that that it's kind of I don't want to say it's all downhill from there, but we can only be the best that we can be at at this age at this time in our life. And you know. Quite honestly, you know, you'll hear some people say like, "Oh, this is, I'm in the best shape now at you know 50 or 60 or 40 than in my whole life," and really that that's that that may be true for them, but usually that's a result of when they were in their 20s, they weren't in as good a shape as they could have been, um, just because as our bodies get older, it's you know we lose things, things stiffen up and, and different stuff like that. So fitness should be more about just being being the best you and comparing yourself to, to you. Um, you know, it's not comparing yourself to, to somebody else or your neighbor or other people in the gym. And it's not chasing, you know, this this youth or this 20-year-old self um, that of what you maybe used to be. It's more it's more about being healthy, being active, being able to enjoy life and live life and have the experiences and everything like that, and um, just basically just being happy with yourself. So, so again, we want to promote um, you know, be fit, be the best version of you that you can be at every stage in your life. And probably the last mistake, and obviously there's probably there's many more that we've probably made, but the, the last one just kind of comes to mind right now is abandoning cardio. And yes, we, we talk about, if you read our stuff, you know, we're not big fans of cardio. And I still stand by that. It, this isn't something that, um, I want to say we've changed our mind on, we've changed our mind on a little bit. But cardio does have a place. The problem is it's just not the first place in your workouts. There is, there's nothing wrong with doing cardio, but it's, again, we want to make sure that we get two to three strength workouts a week, and then if you want to do some cardio, you can do it. The and the problem is, is when, with most people, they only do cardio, and that can lead to to some issues um, with breakdown of the body, as well as um, not losing body fat, and burning off muscle tissue. But also, what a lot of people don't realize when they, when people talk about cardio, the first thing they think of is running and jogging. They don't realize that we can do cardio through intervals, we can do cardio through walking, we can do cardio through a, a rower, a bike, um, a skier, taking a walk. There's lots of different um, ways we can do that. 
we can even do it with farmer's blocks. We can, you know, grab a set of kettlebells. It's about, you know, total about maybe half our body weight and just go for a walk. Take, make your goal, you're going to carry them for a mile or two miles today. And you can set them down, but the, what we're doing with that is we're going to get the heart rate up. And that's really all cardio is about, is getting the heart rate up and keeping it at an elevated rate for a period of time. Um, this, like I was saying earlier, we can do this with interval training, and that can be like a 30-30, it can be a 30-14, a 20-40, different things like that. These are all cardio. Um, Cause like I said, cardio is basically just getting your, your heart rate up. So it's not that, that cardio is bad, it's just that it shouldn't be the first part of your, your workout when you get the strength in. And if, if you enjoy running, if you enjoy walking, biking, whatever it is, go out and, and do those things because again, Doing what you like is going to keep you active longer, where if it's something that you absolutely hate, um, you're probably not gonna do it, you're not gonna really stick with it. So so those are just a few mistakes, these are things I was thinking about that you know we've we've changed some of our opinions on. Um, you know, we've made some of these mistakes in, in our gym and um, and, and I, I think I'm not I'm not happy we made them, but I'm not upset about it and I think that's just part of evolving and learning and you know a year from now, three years from now, we'll have different opinions on some of the stuff that we're doing right now, but that, I think that's normal. You, you know, if you're doing the same thing that you're doing, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, and everything's exactly the same, it's probably, pro probably a sign that you're not learning and, and growing and how, as a professional. So, um, I just wanted to kind of share those with you a little bit today, and I hope you guys enjoyed this and you know, found this interesting. And uh, we'll be back next week with a whole other episode.